Autodesk UpChain adds regular point release updates, adding important, useful functionality for your teams. Here are just a few of the highlights. When importing data from SolidWorks, you now have better support for suppressed files during data loading. UpChain will be able to read suppressed file mapped attributes on import, write mapped attributes to a suppressed file upon checkout, and have the options to create item for that suppressed file and add it to the engineering bomb structure. You'll need to make sure to enable this tenant property in the administrative settings. When it comes to using the copy and clone functions, we've reduced the amount of clicks required when selecting and deselecting items. How does it work? When a user selects the checkbox with the right mouse click, they'll be presented with the following options. Select all, unselect all, select development, select released, select released external, as well as any other status that may be valid to the files you're working on. 22.4 adds better support for working with SOLIDWORKS derived parts. This includes support for multiple derived parts inserted into a single SOLIDWORKS file, multi-level derived parts, where a derived part is based on another derived part, derived parts with missing or broken file references, and out-of-context derived parts which have a file reference not open in a current session. Likewise, we've added additional support for inventor-derived parts and assemblies uploaded into UpChain. By default, they will be set as a phantom item. Suppressed derived parts will also be recognized, and the copy clone functions will be available for any derived parts or assemblies. In the past, it could be very time-consuming trying to find a component, since you were limited to searching based on item number and description. Now, the quick search function in UpChain's CBOM or CAD bomb will support the file name attribute, giving you additional ways to find things quickly. When it comes to change notices, we've added the ability to see an item's list of related change notices inside the plugin's assignments section and access the correct CN on the web by using the hyperlink. For admins, we've added the ability to expose and add values to existing pick lists. You can also change their description. In the past, change requests could be difficult to reject if they were not configured properly. Now we've added the ability for a tenant admin to reject any change request workflow when it is at a decision primitive, task primitive, or object decision workflow step. To prevent change request workflows from getting stuck on quorum decision states, we've added better controls to force input on percentage to complete parameters and only taking into account active users for estimating when the quorum decision is complete. To prevent accidental blank renames of items, we've created a system generated notification if a user is trying to perform a save action that would result in saving an empty item name. In the past, it was difficult and time-consuming when a change request was held up because a child item had other pending CRs associated with it. Users had no way to quickly know which ones. Now, in 22.4, the system will generate a list of items and their other active CRs so that you can pinpoint which one might prevent the release of a parent item. We've now added the ability to open the results of an advanced search in a new tab without losing currently open datasets. Sometimes it can be difficult to distinguish projects with long names that begin similarly. In 22.4, we've added the ability to see the whole project name in a pop-up tooltip. That way you can maintain your preferred interface layout while also picking the right project the first time, every time you'll see our commitment to continually improving our products based on your feedback and suggestions. For more information on the full contents of this release, please refer to the release notes section of the UpChain page on the Knowledge Network.